the garden. Everyone loves the look of a beautiful garden, but not everybody likes the work of a beautiful garden. So how can you have the look without the work? We're gonna break it down for you. First step is really to focus on the foundation. I call the foundation of any garden is good soil. And making good soil is about mending that soil that you have. So if you have sandy soil, you need to improve it and or just poor soil quality like clay. This is organic matter, and this is also known as compost. You can see how it clumps in my hand and breaks away. That's a perfect combined mix. This is rich in organic matter, and meaning it's full of nutrients. So that also means I don't need to fertilize. Next step, it's all about plant selection and looking for plants that make life easy on you. Let's talk about those you don't have to water as often, and it's this one here, drought tolerance. A good indicator of a plant with drought tolerance is that gray to silver foliage, it reflects the light. This one here, lambs here as well, nice and felty. Now, another plant that will be drought tolerant are those succulent. This is stone crop. This one here, you can see it's a succulent, almost looks like the cactus family, and in full sun, a perfect ground cover. Another one that's so easy, a classic, a favorite, hens and chicks, so easy that I could even take little pieces of this guy off, just stick it in the ground, and they'll grow and hardly needs any water. Now, you got your creeping thymes that are nice to walk on. They add a little bit of color, fragrance at that same time. And then there's a classic, a favorite annual plant. This one right here is called Portulaca. And Portulaca loves it hot, loves it dry, and will flower all season long. So if you want to cut down work, it's about the easy plants and selecting those you don't need to water as often. Containers. Everyone thinks they're easy and they're meant to be easy. Now, let's kind of talk about three things to make them easier for you. Number one, not all pots are created equal. You can see this one here. It doesn't have a lot of mass for soil. I like pots that are a little bit larger. The more soil, the longer they're gonna last without watering, in between watering. It's a little bit more forgiving. So look for pots that are a little bit more, that have more of a soil capacity. Those little four inch ones, they'll dry out way too quick. Now, this guy here. The next thing that you wanna do is make sure the plant material that you're selecting, that is the pot material you're selecting, won't break during the winter months. If this freezes in the winter and expands, the water will expand, it'll crack the pot. Now, you can see with the self-watering containers, this right here is a little basin in the bottom. That basin holds water but keeps the plant's roots out. So that's all about drainage. So when it comes to container gardens, think about it. number one, soil capacity, number two, the right material, and number three, make sure there is some drainage. And finally, let's talk about mulch. We have black mulch here, native mulch right there. It smells so good. So this here is gardening gold. It reduces watering, it reduces weeding, and by putting mulch into the garden, over time, it breaks down, adding back organic matter into the soil. So think about it. Better soil, less weeding, less watering. Mulch, that is gold. So there are some ways to make gardening easier.